So, very good evening. In today's class, we will learn about database and MySQL database, specifically using PHP. Database is a very powerful means of storing data and very organized means of storing data. We will not be going into much details of what database is and how we use database. That's a completely different course. But we will learn how you use MySQL database. We create tables and how we use tables, read data from tables, save table, trade data in tables and so on and so forth. My name is Dr. Shan Bhatti. If you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe the channel, hit that bell icon so you receive the notifications regularly. Let's begin. Now, first thing you need to ensure is that once you start your XAMPP server, your MySQL server is also started. Okay. So in my XAMPP server, I have started the Apache server and MySQL server are both running. Then once we come on my Apache, uh, on my local host page, okay, uh, you would find that there's a link called my PHP admin. Okay, uh, this my uh, PHP my admin is basically linked to your database. Okay, so if you click on this thing, uh, you would be able to redirect to PHP my admin page. Otherwise, obviously, you can type type this URL directly as well. So on a browser, type localhost slash PHP my admin. It will bring you to MySQL main admin page. This is very important and let's explore this page first before we go into more uh, and smaller nitty gritties. Okay. On this basically my PHP admin page, you are able to control and manage your entire databases. Okay. So for example, once you come here for the first time, the first thing you see is on your my PHP panel, the list of various different databases that are available. These are all different databases that are already available or already in my uh, MySQL system. In the main page, there are some general settings which you basically uh, are concerned with your encoding, your appearance, your language, and some database basic required informations. This might be useful in later on cases where we need to specify what my database is, my username, for example, and so on and so forth. Okay. Then we come inside the database tab. Once you are inside the database tab, again, it lists the same thing as they are here, the name main databases that you have created. Okay. This is where you can create your database as well. So if you don't want to create the database through a code, obviously we can do that using PHP and MySQL, uh, but we also are able to create a database directly from here as well. So we specify a database name and we hit the create. So let's do that. For example, a PHP uh, test DB. Okay. So this becomes my uh, database name. Again, name can be any name that you want to do. Uh, encoding, basically, uh, we leave it to default. Usually, most of the case, we want a UDF-8 uh, general coding. Uh, we can talk about this if you are using multilingual uh, databases in later on sections. Okay. Then we hit create. That's it. All the simple thing you do is you name your database here and your database is now created. Once you create a database, you would find that everything is now a little bit different on this top panel. So if I come back onto my main home page, on my main pa admin panel, click on your home button, it will redirect you to your home thing. Okay, so now you see some of the icons are different here. So if I go back inside the database where I created the database previously, again, the home icon is a small icon at the top. You see that now my PHP test database is already created here. Okay, um, within this, we can go inside the check privileges uh, to check various different privileges that we have available for this database. Otherwise, this is main database that we are basically using. Again, on this same page, we have SQL. This is the tab where you can actually execute your SQL statements. So you can write create database uh, or a query and or select query or whatever queries you want to perform on this particular panel here. This is like a command prompt for your MySQL. So whatever queries you write, you press go will execute. We will do that in momentarily. Then we come into status. It will tell us various different status information. Okay. Um, about traffic and something, user accounts, what users we have created on our system. By default, we have a root users that has all basic privileges on databases. Okay. So a root is basically a default user that has been created. So the database that I also created has a root as a main user. So if, when we go and access this database through PHP, we need to provide username and password for this particular database. The user is a root. Okay. Similarly, you can export the database, you can import a database from any other source on any MySQL uh, backups and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, obviously, the settings are here where which we use to properly manage few other options within our SQL. Okay. So if I come back inside the database, the main thing is we access my database. 
Once I do that, now you see this, the main structure appears. This structure will tell us the basic structure of my database. Currently, we have only created the database. There's no table created within this database. So what we do is we can create tables from now on. For example, my first table that we will create, uh, let's just say, uh, will be uh, user name, user data, okay? This becomes my user data table. How many columns it requires? Obviously, we can change this later on. For now, let me just create, for example, six columns. Okay. So we specified here, click on go. And what it will do is it will go and create the table for us. As simple as that. It becomes that much easy to create structures in this table. Now it asks us for the details of all those six columns that we want to create. For example, what is the name of column one? So I can, for example, say um, number or for example, as a serial number. Okay, or in fact, let's just name it ID. Okay, ID. Um, sometimes what I do, I name the table columns in capital letter. It allows me to have a better understanding of what I'm doing. So uh, I have an ID. Its type is supposed to be integer. Obviously, it's an integer ID. The length of this character. Um, how many characters is allowed in this thing? So for example, I can just say four. Uh, default value as defined or null or current time. Okay, these are three options available. Usually we leave it to none. Means that by default, there is no value inside this particular uh, text uh, column. Sorry. Okay. Uh, collection, what basic uh, collection it belongs to. Again, I usually leave it to blank, but you can specify any of these collections based on your language or UTF language that you are using. Okay. So once you leave it, basically it becomes the default of your database. Attributes, for example, it's binary, unsigned, signed, zero, update, whatever attributes you want to use. Index, is it a primary index, unique, null, full, text, septual. Now, again, as I said, I'm not going into the technical details of databases. This is something of a, something you might have already discussed or um, this is a whole lot of different course when we discuss all these minor parameters. So I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of database anyway from previous course, but uh, generally, quickly speaking, primary basically means that it's a primary key. Every ID would have a unique primary options, okay? So I can specify up this to be a primary key and as soon as I do that, it allows me to click on index. Size, I think is okay. Just click on go. Now this becomes my primary key. Next, I can have a name. Okay. And this will be varchar again because it were multiple variable characters. Length, I don't want to specify. So it will basically become unknown. Or if you want, you can say, for example, 200 characters. Or because name, I think name should be like 60 characters. I think not many people have bigger names than that. Then the rest will be blank. For example, father name, okay, um, father name, and again, this will be Varkar, and the name, again, I will just say, have a 60 characters limit to it. Similarly, for example, phone number, this can be integer, uh, third will be, for example, address, this will again be Varkar, um, I will leave the blank, and I think finally, email, right? We have an email detail. So name, uh, father name, phone number, address, and email. This can again be a walker a limit. I will just exceed to, for example, 30 characters and let the remaining things be blank. So now we have specified the basic structure of my table that I was user data. Okay. And then now I scroll down and click on save button. Hit save. Please enter a valid length. Okay. Uh, in these fields, we need to specify length. Okay. For example, this can be 15 and address can be of 200 characters. Okay, click on save and hopefully it's processed and my table has been created. Okay, there you go. So now you see the straight table structure. Previously, there was nothing. So now I have a table structure with ID, name, father name, phone number, address and email address. Okay, obviously you can change these names, you can delete them or you can edit them, whatever you want to do directly from this MyPHP admin panel. So it becomes very easy to create tables using this MyPHP admin panel. And similarly, you can create more tables as you want. So if I scroll down, you would find that there's a lots of information about this particular table, uh, which is basically uh, you can use for various different purposes. Okay. Um, similarly, if I go inside now SQL, Okay, as soon as I go inside the SQL, you will find that there's a query written here already. This is again the same SQL panel that we can use to edit and give any SQL queries directly in this command prompt. Okay, so it's, it's like a small thing. So, for example, if I say select static from user data, again, remember the user data was my table name. So, we say um, select static from user data where one, again, the condition is one, or if in this case, we don't need a condition. 
if you just write a query and hit go button so what it should do it will execute this query fetch the data from table 1 and will try to show it to me obviously there is nothing to display the name father name email and there is basically no data here okay so what we do we need to insert the data inside this table so i first go inside insert now okay so as soon as you go on so the insert see this the column id name father name phone number address email then same thing id name father name email address two rows are given to us you can have as many rows as you want so for example id becomes one name becomes zishan b h a w t i father name becomes for example again i will just use my name and then phone number becomes phone number again there is no validation at this point we can have a validation please enter a value less than or equal to oh, okay i gave a few big numbers so for example 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay address uh, for example this can be a c a d e academy uh, jam shuru uh, email address can be for example zishan at the rate um, gmail.com okay so as soon as i click on go what it should do is it should insert this query inside my table okay what it now did is it gave me uh, this query automatically okay this is basically uh, your execution code for example one row inserted we have a query was successfully inserted the query it actually used to enter the data has been again given to us this is because php also knows um, sorry mysql also knows that you might be using the same thing in your uh, PHP in databases. So we will now use this query or we will save this query and then we will use the same query in our PHP to insert a record using our PHP into our databases. Okay. So once you create a PHP form and you click on submit and you need to save the user data, this is what you need to do. So your queries are automatically generated. So if you just do one or two test runs, you would find that your queries are automatically generated and you can use this queries inside this query it says insert into user data so basically insert the data that we are in, uh, trying to insert inside our tables so this is our my table name okay uh, insert into this table name id name father name phone number address email now these are the names of the table column they are specified sequentially the way we created them this is done uh, or this is the syntax of insert query this insert query means that these are six different rows and based or sorry six different columns so these are six different columns based on these six string columns the values for these columns are such okay so insert into user table the sequence is basically in this order the name of the columns the value of each of the column sorry the value of each of the column is again within brackets single quotations single quotations single quotations and we specify all our statements here as simple as that so if, even when we go inside php this is the query that we will be using to execute the data now if you need to enter another data for example now i want to enter two so instead of going back inside the insert table and inserting the record from there i just use directly from here okay so i come here and i mohammed ah ahmed ahmed for example father name uh, m u h a w mohammed ali and then phone number i can just change it to for example uh, 222 2222 um, and then uh, let the address be same and email for example i change it to m u h at mohammed ali again okay at the gmail so now what i did instead of going into insert and adding the records from there i just write the query myself so i just have this query uh, and insert into user data id name same thing the values i change the values here in order to execute this query what I do is I go inside the go button, click on go, one row inserted. Now, if I go inside the structure again, you would find that the structure is available. Within this structure available, we have uh, the basic thing. I think in, in, and it's not showing us the data right now. Okay. Uh, yes, it's not showing us the data right now. What we can do is we can come inside the SQL. And we can say select steric from user data where condition is one. Now this again is a query. This query specifies that select steric is a wild card. It basically means everything. Okay. Obviously we would be changing this based on our requirements, what we want to fetch and what we want to save. At this point, it means that select everything from the user data table. So whatever data is inside, store inside the table, 
you fetch it from here where condition is one where every condition is basically satisfied so condition where is basically a conditional statement just like if else so we are specifying a condition okay select certain records from the data where certain conditions are matching okay which can be for example where username is starting with z or where the age is greater than 40 or where the data is uh, invalid or phone number is not entered or whatever conditions basically you want to evaluate uh, there will be various multiple things that we do so once i write the condition here press go hopefully this time i will be able to see two records within my system so previously there was no record so no records were shown now as you can see two records are shown in my tables I can delete them i can edit them i can copy them whatever i want directly on the admin panel without actually going inside it so my php admin panel is quite interesting and very powerful way of easily creating databases and st easily structuring the data and easily managing the database within our php mysql server okay similarly uh, again you can go inside the export field if i click here this is used sometimes to export your database to make it as a backup so that tomorrow uh, you might need to uh, if, if something happens you have a backup regularly okay so or maybe you are switching system from one server to another so we export the tables from here and then import it somewhere else similarly we have an import option as well so if somebody else has created tables we want to use their project we need to import the data this is where we come in we choose the file and we import the data so, okay we check the privileges basically means that what a root user can do or what other users can do so you can create a new user here and then you can specify privileges that whether they have all privileges or basically they have limited privileges like they can access certain database and others or not okay so operations are again certain operations that you can perform and certain settings that you can manage for your database usually i don't temper with these things um our major concern is we go inside the browse we see our records here inside the browse tab previously again these records were not shown um, obviously we have a table here as soon as you start creating more tables the more tables record would be appearing if you go inside the structure this is a structure of your single table obviously as i said you can create more tables as well okay so as soon as you start working with more tables as soon as you start creating more relations uh, basically this thing becomes more complex and all everything is basically available to you you can even see your relational view as well at this moment as, as you know we don't have that much of a data available and no relations has been created or foreign key primary key relation has been established so there's nothing here this is something that we will be talking about as we go along in future classes okay my sql again this is where we perform certain sql statements check the output and then we copy this statement and put it in our php and execute it there so before we going inside the php sometimes we check our sql queries here ensuring that the, the, the query is correct and it is showing us exactly what we want and all the data that we want to see okay and then we basically go and uh, perform those queries or we just copy and paste those queries inside php code ensuring that the query is correct it will return the correct data and then based on what it returns or whatever the output is we basically cover, do our php designing at that point of time okay so it's a very easy and simple to use interface nothing much to here you can search various records you can insert as many records as you want directly from here or obviously you can use your sql query and then uh, same thing we do with our PHP so you, we can create our PHP admin similar form in our PHP and add uh, data there and as soon as user clicks submit the data is sent inside the database using the same as in internal query okay so I hope you understand this is a very simple way of using uh, this my PHP admin panel in next class we will be talking about how you can access this my PHP uh, how you can access this MySQL from your PHP uh, code okay this is Dr. Shanbadi. Thank you for watching. Signing off.